Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Chappell at Intuit Medical, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about SI joint instability. So this is a problem we see a lot in our office every day, and it's not super common, but it's more common amongst females. Males can have it as well, but usually it's in females that have had multiple pregnancies, uh, and during those pregnancies have developed uh, low back pain. It doesn't have to be during pregnancy. It can be in our, in our athletes with overuse injuries or other th things. And they've generally done a lot of things for it, including physical therapy, ice, heat, anti-inflammatory medications, uh, had numerous imaging studies, and the imaging studies don't really describe their pain. You may have SI joint instability. So when a patient comes to my office with SI joint instability, I'll generally walk them through a few different tests. The first thing I'll ask is, where does it hurt? And there's a term called Fortin finger sign, which generally is pretty descriptive of SI joint instability. And the person will point pretty much like this. They'll use the thumb or their finger and point directly to an SI joint and or both SI joints in the case of bilateral SI joint instability. When they come to the office, we'll do a, a few tests. We'll do a pelvic rock test. We'll basically put a posterior force through either hip and ask whether or not this hurts. If it hurts, then we're, we're headed in the right direction. We then check the hips to make sure it's not a hip joint problem, even though sometimes it's described as my hips hurt. SI joint pain is here, whereas hip joint pain is generally in the groin, if it's true hip joint pathology, which generally doesn't happen until later on in life. So once we determine that, we'll do a test called a straight leg raise. And so I'll ask the patient to actively raise their leg and then put it down and make sure there's no signs or symptoms, no electricity going down their legs. And we'll have them raise the other leg, same thing. I'm not necessarily looking for radicular pain at this point. I'm seeing how easy it is to raise a leg. And so I'll ask the patient to compare. Maybe you could do this at home. Raise one leg off the floor, see what it feels like. Raise the other leg off the floor, see what it feels like. If one is heavier, that's a good indication of SI joint instability. And the reason being is, I'll grab a, a skeleton from over here, and we'll talk a little bit about why this happens. In order to flex the hip or raise the leg off the floor, this would be the femur, this would be the hips, you fire a muscle called the iliacus. The iliacus muscle is a strong hip flexor. So what happens if the SI joint is unstable? Well, when you fire that muscle, the innominate, this bone here, will move forward prior to the leg coming off the table, which causes pain, and will also make that leg feel a little bit heavier or harder to move. Once we've established that diagnosis, a little bit more anatomy uh, for, from, from the skeleton. Um, so what is the SI joint? The SI joint is basically the joint bec between the sacrum, which is this bone here, and the innominate, hence the SI joint. It's supported by huge ligaments called the posterior sacroiliac ligaments. When these, these ligaments pretty much never tear or just fall off like another type of ligament injury, but they can become destabilized over time, secondary to, like I said, repetitive motion, sports, athletics, multiple pregnancies, um, and unfortunately, just sometimes life. Um, this is oftentimes referred to as functional back pain because there doesn't seem to be a problem, however it does hurt. It's very debilitating at times. So the question is, what do you do if you have SI joint instability? It's a very, very difficult uh, problem to treat. In most cases, physical therapy is the mainstay of, of treatment. If you have a weak or loose posterior sacroiliac ligament, you usually compensate by using your glute muscles, specifically the gluteus medius. That muscle will tighten up the pelvis for as long as it can until it, it begins to fail as well. So oftentimes people will describe pain out over the lateral aspect of their hip or the greater trochanter, sometimes misdiagnosed as trochanteric bursitis. You've, often, you've probably heard your grandmother say that, but it doesn't really exist that frequently. And it's usually a tendonitis, in this case a tendinosis, of the gluteus medius tendon as it inserts on the hip. It's been overworked trying to stabilize the pelvis. So how do I treat this? I usually use regenerative injections with the intent to stabilize the posterior sacroiliac ligaments, usually using either stem cells from bone marrow or platelets from your blood. We inject these substances into the ligament, which causes a reaction or a perceived injury, and your body goes to work healing the process. And it generally works pretty well. Other options would include surgery, but that would be after conservative options have been tried. 
Hope this explains a little bit about SI joint instability. Thanks.